Okay. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters and guests. How are you today? Good, thank you. Welcome to District 30 2012 Toastmasters Leadership Institute. This session, Leading with Confidence, this is the place this morning to learn more about leadership. If you're looking for leading with confidence, you're in the right place. A few housekeeping rules before we get started. If you have an iPad, an iTouch, an iTalk, a Blackberry, Raspberry, please silence it. We need to give the speaker our undivided attention. You should have an evaluation sheet. If you don't have it in front of you, you may be sitting on it. One was placed in each <laughs> chair. Be sure to sign the attendance sheet. There are three of them that are going around. There's one in the back, and there should be two others going around also. Allow me one more housekeeping room before I introduce our speaker. At the end of the session, I'll be collecting the evaluation forms. Allow me to introduce the speaker for today, Charles A. Bonea, advanced communicator, competent leader. There is one thing that Charles loves more than donuts, and that is <laughs> Toastmasters. <laughs> Just like with donuts, you have a selection to make. With Toastmasters, there's a lot of goals that you can accomplish, and Charles is going to talk about that today. Charles joined Toastmasters in 2010, and just like the rest of us, he began his journey through the Competent Communication Manual, the Competent Leadership, giving speeches and participating in contests. And at the Winter TLI in 2011, he decided to make Distinguished Toastmaster one of his goals. He has served leadership roles in the two clubs that he belongs to, he was the Vice President of Public Relations in his home club, Unity. He was the Secretary in his second club, Speaking of Leaders. In fiscal year 2013, Charles has become the President of his home club, Unity. In addition to that, he will serve as the Area Governor, Area Governor for 66. So he's certainly the person to talk about leading. The last thing is Charles has learned that he has inspired others while being a Toastmaster. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to the front of the room none other than advanced communicator, Charles Bonet. Thank you very much, Lee. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I can honestly tell you that never did I ever envision that I would be standing here speaking to you. Raise your hand if this is your first TLI. Okay. Second? Second TLI? Third or more? All right. Fantastic. For those that's the third or more, if you didn't have to attend a TLI for required officer training, would you still attend? Raise your hand if you still would. Okay. Why? Well, because I'm, I always find something new uh, that I can use here. Mm -hmm. okay. And I meet, I meet people I've seen before, and it's nice to Okay. Anyone else? 30 more? Wants to... Yeah. Personal and professional development. Okay. All right. Great. Well, we're going we're gonna to talk about leading with confidence today. So if, if you believe you currently lead with confidence, you're in the right place, so I'm going to look to you to share some of your ideas. If you're looking to lead with confidence and maybe you want a slightly different perspective or just a refresher, you're in the right place. And if you're just starting out and this is your first TLA and you're looking to get some tools so that you can lead with confidence, you're definitely in the right place. When I joined Toastmasters two and a half years ago, leading anything wasn't in my mind. I had a very simple goal. I wanted to not sound like a meandering goofball. Right? Okay, go. You can you can identify with that, or for better or worse. Right? You know how it goes. My first club, you know, these first few roles, leadership roles. 
eye counselor, grammarian, evaluator. This was me. Uh, you had you had 27 so's, 31 on, 16 you knows. You had 12 anyways, and uh, you you had 19 ands, 12 repeats, and and one big butt. <laughs> All right, maybe, maybe that didn't come out right. So much for being a meandering goofball. Right? But as as I went on, as I gave more speeches, took more leadership roles, I started to think about values. I started to think about values, and that is really what is at the core for all of us. Pretty simple. I'm not going to say I didn't have values, but I am going to say that I didn't really think about them. I didn't clearly <coughs> define them. However, what I learned, and attending TLIs and watching other speakers, I learned that values, once you define them, they're like iron filings. You know, the, you've heard the, the saying, iron sharpens iron. So when you clearly define your values, you're going to, you're going to attract those like things. You're going to look for, for different things. But again, I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that. When I first joined Toastmasters, I had the great fortune of attending a division contest. One of my first clubs was down in Florida. <coughs> and that was, for me, an eye-opening experience. The speaker who won gave this amazing speech about the <coughs> lessons that his mother had taught him. What came across first to me was he was impeccably dressed. And for Florida, that's in the summer, that's amazing. You know, how it is out there. Just visualize palm trees, sunshine, and then that heat that hits you when you get out of the car. This guy didn't have any effects of that. A crisp white suit, a shirt and tie. This tie was knotted perfectly. Could have walked out of, uh, you know, a, a catalog, a GQ magazine or something. But his speech was every, every word, every inflection, every hand gesture accentuated the points that he was trying to make, and that had a deep, deep impact on me. It resonated. The fact that I'm relating this to you today is, is a testament to that. Wow. You know, will, will I ever get to be that good? I'm just glad that I got to see that right out of the gate. So when I came here and began TLIs and visiting other clubs, I looked for Toastmasters to emulate. Now, how do they do it, and how can I how can I uh, do that? Are you with me so far? Is this you know you can kind of do the same thing? That's that's why one of the things I did was observe, mirror, repeat. Observe, mirror, repeat. And isn't really isn't this something that we did when we were children? We follow the examples of our elders. Sometimes good, maybe some not so good. There's lead by example and there's learn by example. Maybe there were some of our elders whose example that we didn't want to follow. But still, it holds. Observe, mirror, repeat. And that was getting me there. I was doing all right. I was progressing through my CC manual and my CL. But I still had to define my values. So there's a little bit of this meandering going on. But that's okay, because Toastmasters being totally new, I'm, I'm learning new tools, ways to express myself, ways to organize. So observe her and repeat. When I attended that TLI last winter, maybe it was even before that, I was guiding Jerry Evans. You guys know who Jerry Evans is? Right. Yeah, he and, he and John Levy did a presentation on leadership, and that, that got me thinking about leadership in a, in a different way. You know, what, do, what do leaders do? What do, uh, you know, what do they impart to us? Leaders, they impart to us you know, talking, explaining, showing, and recognizing and rewarding. Now, with, with the Toastmasters that I identified in, as leaders and I wanted to emulate, for me, it was the showing more than anything else. But sometimes we're leading and we're not necessarily conscious of it. I'm quite certain that that Toastmaster who won the division contest down in Florida that year, I'm quite certain, first of all, he didn't know me from anyone. 
he had no idea that he was inspiring me and my fellow Toastmasters who had gone to see that contest. He was just exercising his craft, but he did. And isn't that what other accomplished Toastmasters do? Who are, who are the Toastmasters that, think about this, who are the Toastmasters that you have identified that you want to take you know, something from, little bits and pieces? For me, sometimes you know, when I get nervous, you know, I, I visualize. Do you do this? Do you visualize a Toastmaster and maybe kind of calms you down? I would love to be, I would love to have that relaxed, easygoing confidence of Ron, my fellow Toastmaster here. He's, uh, he's well <laughs> there you go, see? I would love to have the affability of Mags uh, Sullivan Tomich back there. If I could have the regal presence of someone like Barry Mixon, and certainly his voice, wow. <laughs> the exuberance, the, the inexhaustible exuberance of someone like Pres Vasilev, and the cheerful, the cheerful joy of Joe Moore. And these are all people that, or some of these people you're aware of, right? Well, uh, Barry and Prez have sessions right after this, so you have to flip a coin as to which one you want to see, and Joan has uh, a session later in the day if you want to see and, and take a look at those styles. But those, those, are, those are the leaders that I, that I look to, and I try to, to learn from them. So, talk and explain and show me. To get back to values, now, with my CC and meandering through my CL, competing in a few contests, then I started thinking about leadership and what can I do, what can I do to get better, what can I do to start focusing on that. How many of you would say that joining Toastmasters, at least in the beginning, working on your CC or CL, it's like learning to ride a bike, and the CC and CL, that's like your training wheels, right? So the more you go through that, the easier, it, well maybe not the easier it gets, but you become more comfortable. You build your confidence, you gain competence. So once you get to that point, you start thinking of, you know, how, how can I make this better? And that's what I, that's what I started thinking about, you know, values, what are my values? And one of the things I did then was, I looked them up, values, what are values? And I know it's, it's okay that you can't necessarily see this, it's not the point. I took 12, I took 12 values that resonate with me. Some of these I currently think that I do okay with. Others I want to become better. Now why why twelve? Anyone anyone guess? Take a guess, anybody. Okay, that's great. That's great, exactly. So if I wanted to, my values and again, you know, accountability, vitality, humor, service, economy, these are just these are mine. Choose whichever apply to you. Then if you want to, since we're approaching a new year, a new Toastmasters year, if you wanted to, and I'm still on the fence about this, I may do it, I could choose one of these to focus on each month throughout the year. And then sharpen, sharpen my skills, sharpen my leadership. So we've talked about observe, mirror, repeat, characteristics of leadership. Where do we go from there? Goals. Goals. Define, define a goal, plan. Joe Moore has the mantra, plan the work, work the plan. Have you, you've heard that, right? Do it. My thing is do it by sticking to it. Evaluate and repeat. Which of these five would you say is the toughest? Define. Defining, okay. Anyone else? Evaluate. Evaluate? <coughs> Repeating it. Repeating it, okay. All right, wow. Totally not Do what I would have expected. Do it. There you go, there you go. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Do it by sticking to it. I mean, come on. How often? I mean, every New Year's, you know, we say, you know, I'm going to eat less. I'm going to eat more of the right foods. I'm not going to drink so much. I'm going to complete my CC, my CL manual. And first few months, 
it's going great, and eventually <laughs> something always, it's the same sort of thing when you, when you have a speech to write, right? All of a sudden, everything else becomes more important. You know, American Idol, <laughs> those only in aisles. Law and Order Marathon, the game is on, right? Do it by sticking to it. <coughs> Defining what's the difference between a state this statement. I want to take a vacation. I want to take a vacation in Cincinnati. Well, first of all, if you want to take a vacation in Cincinnati, you probably waited too long to take a vacation, right? Uh, is anybody here from Cincinnati? All right, good. I'm safe. I'm safe there. My backup was Chillicothe, Ohio. <laughs> but vacation, broad, Cincinnati location, very specific. That's a, that's a goal that you can define. And I understand what you're saying. The most difficult one is defining the goal. You know, where do we start? Do we... Keep it simple. How many here are working on their their CC manual right now? Okay. All right. Of how many of you are? within the range of uh, the first three speeches. Okay, all right. Do you, do you have a goal as to when you'll complete your CC? Just any, any, any of you who are, no? Okay, I'm, I'm not saying you have to, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's kind of, and, that, and again, that's the whole point of Toastmasters, is it's, it's self-paced. I didn't, when I joined, I didn't have a specific goal of when I was going to complete my CC. That came later. It took me 13 months to complete my, my CC, but it took me two years to complete my CL. Has anyone had a similar experience? How many of you has it's taken longer to complete your CL than your CC? Okay, all right. Uh, how much longer, how, how long did it take you to complete your CL? I'm still in the process. Still in the process, okay. Anyone else? I'm still in the process. Still in the process, okay. What's, what's the biggest, hurdle, I guess, in, in progressing in your CL. Being an officer and then doing the web master and all that. Okay. All right. Now, how many of you are like me and for several meetings maybe you fulfilled a role but you haven't brought your manual? <laughs> when I when I first joined Toastmasters, I went to meetings for about three to four months I mean, and sometimes I even had my CL manual with me. And I just didn't get anything signed off. For me, the, the CC was, was more important. Now, again, to get back to defining goals. Is there anyone here who's taken longer than 13 months, maybe longer than two years to complete a CC? Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Uh, how long? Ten years. Ten years. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, eighteen months. Okay. Right. Four years. I don't feel so bad after this gentleman said it took ten years. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the worst. <laughs> this is the benefit of TLI. You realize you're not always. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why did it take you four years? You know. Again, it goes back to your defining and planning, Charles. I had, when I joined Toastmasters five years ago, I had a very vague goal. I said, I want to be a better public speaker. Mm -hmm. when, it, when I finished my 10th speech, after four years, I said, why is it so, still so difficult? I realized that with my vague goal, I got a very vague result. And it was after that that I really sat down I actually talked to Charles, planned and defined. And the interesting thing about writing down, <coughs> excuse me, your plan, <coughs> defining your plan and actually planning it out in writing, your brain, I've discovered recently, your brain actually becomes more receptive to opportunities to move you closer to the goal. And I have certainly found that to be true in the last year, working in my advanced manuals. Has anyone else had a similar experience? Yeah. <coughs> who, who said that? I did. You did? Okay. Yeah. Same thing. Very Same thing. vague. Become a better public speaker or networking. You know, a better networker. Mm 
and that was about it. Yeah. Quick story, last, well, early this Toastmasters year, I had completed my CC, and then I wanted to complete my, my ACB, and then with my second club, is there anyone here who belongs to more than one club? How many, how many clubs? Just two? Anyone, anyone more than two clubs? Just two. <laughs> <laughs> anyone more than two clubs? Okay. All right. That's, that's, yeah, two, two is plenty for me. But for my second club, they, they wanted, for the DCP, they wanted somebody to complete a second CC. And I said, well, you know what? I'll, I'll give it a shot. It never occurred to me. Did it ever occur to you that, that you could, if you wanted to, that you could do a second CC? Yeah? Okay. It, I, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't. <clears throat> well, gee, why, why not? I have to tell you, personally, it's better the second time around. It really is. Obviously, I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't done it, but the first time around, again, going back to that training wheels metaphor, first time around, I'm working through these speeches and just getting used to the whole mechanics of being up here and making eye contact and body language and all that sort of thing. Once I got through the first CC, that, that kind of settles. So with the second one, with the second one, I could focus on other things and I can really work on developing the material and the thread and working in specific you know, little points and all that. I had no idea that was that was gonna happen. But here's here's where the here's where the goal, here's where the defining the goals and planning the goals comes in. I was totally dragging my heels on my ACB and half the year went by. I was doing okay with my CC, but nothing and all of a sudden Am I going to do this? Am I going to finish this? How am I going to do this? So at first I was panic, panicky, you know, a little bit of anxiety. Uh, you know, I'm going to fail. I'm not going to see it through, and I'm going to fall short of the goal. And I'm going to let the team down. You know that kind of thing. Exhale, breathe. I sat down and I, I plotted it out. And has anyone else done that? Have you plotted out when you're going to do a speech or? So I mean, it's, it's all right here. I, you know, CC manual and a CL with the speeches. I figured out which ones I needed to do. I figured out how much how much time can I can I finish it? And I knew that I wasn't going to finish it only by giving speeches in my home club. I would have to go out, and that was a big step. The first time I visited another club and did a speech. How many of you have given speeches at other clubs? Right, now the first the first time you did it, how, was it was it any more nervous? Uh, be, were you more nervous than your first doing it at your home club on your home turf? Or uh, balanced out the fact that I gave the same speech and I was okay. A different eyes, set of eyes watching. Me. Sure, sure, okay. So I figured out that the only way I was going to complete my ACB would be is if I did speeches at at other clubs. And this is something that I learned from Barry Mixon. There was, I think it was in the fall. Did anyone attend his uh, road to DTM? He did a speech on a, a DTM presentation. Yes, okay. What's ACB? ACB is Advanced Communicative Bronze. That's the, that's the next level past <coughs> CC. But Barry had this thing where, okay, you want, a, you want your DTM? You know, get, get out of your comfort zone, go to different clubs. There are always clubs. There are some clubs, their rosters are packed. You know, they're booked you know, three months in advance. And there are others who are practically begging, begging for guest speakers. Well, that can be you. What, what better opportunity to, to get yourself, to get your material out in front? So I thought about that. Okay, yeah, why not? And sure, sure, I was nervous. And you know, I, I suppose there will always be a component of that. But to find the goal, I planned it, worked it, and I stuck to it. I stuck to it. And I. You know, there's some late nights and balance out, balance out the, uh, you know, the work and all that sort of thing. But so I, I, I got it done. Now evaluate, and I don't mean just you know the, the in club evaluation. How many of you currently do this? Whether it's Formal or informal? Let's say, how many of you do this informally? You just kind of keep it in your head. Okay, all right. Have, has anyone else really kind of formalized this, set a goal and planned it out? Great, great. How, tell me a little bit, how did you do that? Or, 
I got spreadsheets. I'm a spreadsheet guy. <laughs> <laughs> and basically put together a spreadsheet. I, at the beginning of the year, I'll set my goals, and then what you got to do is you set up the plan for how you're going to accomplish them. When you're going to do them, you chart out the months that you're going to do what to, to basically. Because I got a number of goals. There's business, you know, professional, personal, um, and, 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 uh, and, and work around the house. That's another like mm -hmm. section. Sorry. <laughs> So I guess it's like an Excel with it, different it, tabs, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been with Toastmasters? I I think it's going on my third year. Oh, fantastic. What uh, what's your education level at Toastmasters? Uh, CC. Okay. All right. All right. What's your What's your next goal? Are you, you're doing ACB and ALB. Uh, yeah, I'm on that now. I have my, it's basically five five speeches a year. This year is going to be five speeches and complete my CL. Nice. Okay. Right, right. Have you chosen your advanced manuals yet? The, the two yeah, I already have them. I'm on my third. I'm basically through the beginning part of this, and it's it's not based on Toastmasters year. It's based on calendar year. So it's I've already done three speeches. And I need two more to complete the, the uh, one 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 book in the AC. How, how long did it take you to decide which manual you were going to do? It's pretty simple because when I first started Toastmasters, it all relates to my job. So it's kind of like okay, professional so development. Yeah. It's, it, it, I chose interpersonal communication. Okay. And, and I think it's um, management speeches or something like that. The, the other one I chose was. I'm only going through the interpersonal communication right now. That one scares me. It's very yeah. It's not very hard. It's just um, for me, it, it's hard for to count on other people to, to come and, and produce, and because you got to have the role playing for that one. It's all based on role playing. Right. Right. Okay, so how many of you? It, thank you, thank you very much. So formally, and then how do you how do you evaluate? How do you it, more more than just the success, but how do you review, you know, what you did and what you felt you did well or not? At, at the end of the year, you do a review on, on whether you accomplished the goal, whether you didn't, and then you you replan the next year. I, I as far as a reevaluation, I'm probably am lacking in that. Other than going back and saying, did it did it happen? Did it not? Is there a reason why? Because throughout the year, things come up, and you kind of have to replan. Sure, sure, right. So you periodically review, and then you adjust based on the other things that are going on exactly. in your life. Absolutely. And this whole thing about repeating, I, I think I mentioned it earlier, is you know, so we're all going to make mistakes, but why make the same mistake? Make a different mistake <laughs> and have a different experience and learn from that. That's why it's very, very important to evaluate and then repeat, repeat, repeat the process. But you're moving on to a to to another goal. All right. Disney. I, I didn't, did any of you know that Roy Disney was Walt Disney's brother? I mean, you can kind of make that. I didn't. I didn't know that. <laughs> it's not too hard to make decisions when you know what your values are. It's not too hard to make decisions when you know what your values are. Roy, I learned Walt's brother, but also Roy was the guy who made it happen. Walt was obviously the dreamer, the artist, but Roy was the operations guy. He's the one who put it all together and, and brought it to life, got it off of the off of the page, got it out of Walt's mind. And, and you know, there's a similar there's an analogy between Walt and Roy and uh, Ray Kroc from McDonald's and Fred Turner. Ray, Ray Kroc had a nickname Danny Dreamer. He was always when he was a kid, he was always dreaming about opening up some lemonade stand or popcorn stand or something. But you know, when he got to McDonald's, he was definitely the pitch man. But uh, Fred Turner was the guy who made it happen around the world, and Roy was that kind of guy. So it's, it's not too hard to make decisions when you know what your values are. And that, that's, for me, that, I mean, that's huge. That's huge. And, and I'm, I'm always going to maybe fall short. Maybe I'm not going to make that time to, uh, to step back and review how far I've come and adjust shift the goal. When I decided that I was going to go for my DTM, it was just the DTM. I didn't say that I'm going to do it in three years or two and a half years. I don't want to put that kind of a timeline.
because to me, and I hope maybe you'll agree, that shifts the focus because it becomes, for me, if I put a timeline on it, it puts the emphasis on getting the DTM, not on fulfilling the various aspects of it, not on learning and growing as a speaker or a leader. Would, would you agree with that? Okay, right, great, thanks. It's nice to know I'm on the right track. <laughs> but stating that goal, as Max was saying earlier, that I'm gonna get my DTM, that really, that really pushed away a lot of clutter, a lot of other, you know, things. That, sure, I'm susceptible. I mean, if that Law and Order marathon is on, I'm going to want to watch it, especially if I don't have a speech that's coming up. But knowing that it's there and knowing that I've said it, that's that's it's almost like a, a promise. It's almost like a handshake thing when you declare it. You have to you have to see it through. And you do it for your kids, your nephews, your nieces, your cousins, you know, your fellow Toastmasters. So it's making that declaration. All right, anyone else? Who, does anyone have, has anyone decided to maybe go for their DTM? Great, great. What uh, What point in the process did you know right away? Did you, you know, at a certain point in your Toastmasters journey? That long and arduous 10 year journey to get this. <laughs> I'll share with you this. You know, when I finally committed to it, I said, okay, this is enough, this is enough. Am I going to do it or am I not going to do it? Uh, and so when I finally got to really look at the diagram, you know, that tells you how to get to your VPN, the leadership aspect really appealed to me. So I decided that first I was just going to do the leadership part. And then I realized, you know, again, like you just pointed out, there's a lot of valuable lessons that you're going to get by doing both. So why am I depriving myself of that journey? Uh, and so I set myself out, and my goal is is that to do the Triple Crown Award this upcoming uh, calendar year for the Toastmasters. So I was just finished being the president of the club, so that's my ALB, and then I'm going to do the uh, ACB and ACS this year. And then keep on going. So hopefully. The that's the goal, and I'm kind of doing it like year by year goal. So I know that the ultimate goal is DTM, but as long as I have at least two goals a year, I'll get there. I know that. Okay, fantastic. Who's the other? Who's you? Raise your hand. Yeah. It was actually uh, a given, in a way. When I first joined Toastmasters about three years ago, it was just a matter of timing it out. But uh, one of the things that you want to do is actually know what you want to do with your. Toastmasters experience, whether it's personal or professional or both. Mine was basically to get back on the horse after being in front of people for over 10 years uh, of being absent in that regard. So just wanted to be in front of people. And then just the development of what has happened with the opportunities that come your way if you're prepared. So it was just basically a given and then just plan it out. So I'm in the process of hopefully getting in the next two years. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the, re the thing that made me go for it, Charles, is that once I finished my CC and CL, I took a look at the program and I realized the program, each of the steps towards the DTM are so valuable. Just like this gentleman here said with the, the gentleman with the glasses. I don't know what your name is, sir. Myself? Yes. Uh, Iqbal. Iqbal. Just as Iqbal said, there are so many lessons to be learned from each of those programs that it's just a shame not to do every last one of them. That's that's why I'm doing it. We're, we're getting close uh, on time. I'm so glad that you're all here. I didn't expect it to be a full house. It's, it's great that it is. I'm curious, I mean, you're going to do your evaluations. Did this help at all? Could it help? And, and if so, in what way? If anyone wants to, then you just raise your hand. In uh, grad school, we went through a similar process of defining our values, and so I actually have a little uh, laminated card in my wallet all the time with my values, but I only pull it out maybe once a year when I'm looking for a receipt or something. I kind of <laughs> forgotten about them, so it's uh, great to see an application, how I can you know, actually take that little card and, and start trying to put it into practice and make it more relevant. Yes. 
much content. And somehow it struck me so much after I watched this video. Before, when I was on stage, I felt very really, um, constricted about my body movement and all that. And after seeing how Darren uh, repeated his preparation, the rehearsal, and how he just expressed himself with the body language and all that on the stage, there's something like over me up, over me up, and then like just like the, the one click. Whenever I am on the stage now, I feel free to move around, and so I mirror him, and then now keep repeating. That's a really helpful process. So thank you for reminding me about that. Does anyone here not know who Darren Lacroix is? I don't. Okay, all right. Uh, Google him. Look him up on uh, YouTube. There's a speech that he does. And it's a speech for which he won. That, that uh, championship, and it, it's about you know, falling, and um, oh, it's called ouch. That's what it is, and it's all about that. He he made an appearance at an, uh, just a few weeks ago at Niles Township Toastmasters Club, and he spoke about his whole path, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It, it was an it was an amazing thing uh, to see, and similar to what Cher was saying, one of the tips he gave. Gave, he gave plenty, was, was be present, not perfect. And for me, how many of you write your speeches out? I do. Okay, great. Then, and that's exactly what I do, how many of you then really try to memorize it and then coordinate what you're doing, and then when you get in front, things fall apart a little bit. That's, that's what I do. That's why when Darren said, be present, not perfect. So do your rehearsals. Definitely rehearse. And get, you know, like my uh, division contest uh, winner back uh, down in Florida, he really had, and he, he didn't look rehearsed. It all looked very natural, but very polished. But according to Darren, be present, not perfect. You know the material. You have to trust yourself enough to let it go. And let it go through you. Only if you practice. But yes, of course, right, definitely, definitely. Right, the more you practice, and certainly, certainly, the more you practice, and what has helped me, exactly, is when I'm doing a speech and I'm working on my movements, the actual, the transitional movement, or if I'm using my hand or something, that cues me, and that reinforces what's coming next in the speech. It's that entire thing. That's why it's important to combine your physical, your physicality with what you've what you've written plus the more you speak it out the more you're going to change it for the audience for the venue good i spend more time writing than i do actually practicing the speech and so it shows when i get up and i'm like man i had such a great speech written but i lost it because i didn't practice how many of you videotape yourselves i don't no? that's that's one of my resolutions for the new Toastmasters year, to begin videotaping myself, because that's where it's really going to come through. And I'm a little bit nervous about that, but, uh, you know, I guess I'll get through it. Any, yes, yes. What was Darren's full name? LaCroix, L-A-C-R-O-I-X. If anyone has any other questions, if not, uh, just please, um, I'm so glad that you guys came. I appreciate it. Fill out the evaluation form and enjoy the rest of your TLR. Great job, Charles. And you can tell by the applause, everyone is happy with your presentation. Again, ladies and gentlemen, do not forget to fill out the evaluation form. It's very important. Oh, and has everyone signed in? Has everyone signed in? Yes. Yes. Is anybody not? Yeah. Yeah. Before we leave, I would like to present to Charles for his presentation a certificate of appreciation for your presentation, Lead with Confidence Workshop. June 23rd, 2012, District 30, Toastmasters Leadership Institute, Mission Possible.
ました。